We live in a day and age of rapidly rising food prices. It's something that affects basically everyone. In fact, it seems like all around the world that's a problem right now. That certainly was a problem in the 18th and 19th century also. So how did they deal with it? And what was going on in the 18th and 19th century? Well, in Great Britain during that time period, they had several different kinds of crop failures and other economic up upheaval. Basically the same thing happening in the 18th century and in the early 19th century is basically happening today. A lot of, a lot of similar kinds of situations. And rapidly rising food prices, who do they hit the worst? The working families, right? That's the people who are always on the edge and food is the major part of the budget. And today, um, actually it's much easier than it was in the 18th century. In the 18th century, the food budget is a percentage of the amount of money they had to spend, which was much higher. So maybe half their money or more was spent on food. And when food prices go up, it's very, very difficult. So there are some things that they could do. Um, and there are people that were thinking about it, working on that problem in the 18th century. Primitive cookery doesn't really have a particular author here uh, that we know of. It's really a collection of recipes that for the most part are vegetarian because the author here knows that meat in that time period is very expensive. So what, what other kinds of recipes can we have? So he's collected a, a lot of current recipes, put them together in this cookbook. Also in the back, there's a menu or a bill of fare of 70 dishes that cost less than two pence per serving. So in today's money, maybe two or three dollars. Um, a very, very inexpensive meal. And some of them are interesting, some of them are kind of funny. Uh, you know, bread and butter and a glass of water make a good meal. Well, okay, it can. If you're a very poor person, maybe that's just exactly what you can afford. And so some of these might seem very, very simple, um, but very obvious and very good. And we've just touched on that idea of a printer's uh, meal in the, uh, in the Benjamin Franklin series where he talks about beer and bread and cheese. That's breakfast, right? So some of these are very, very simple, you know, boiling eggs or, you know, having them on toast. I thought this one in the back though, quite, quite interesting and one that we would we would cook today. And it's, there are several different dumplings in here and dumplings in this time period could be um, sort of like a boiled pudding where you put a batter into a bag and you boil it, or you can just drop these things right into the water. And that's what we're gonna be making today. There's, it says dumplings boiled with flour, milk and water only with a little ginger and yeast when it is boiled. You butter it and it is an excellent food. Isn't that interesting that um, if we don't have meat and we don't even have bread maybe, all we, all we have here is a little bit of flour and we want to spice that up. Just flour is really boring. And so what do we put in here? We put ginger in. Ginger, one of the least expensive spices in the time period, and would also show up in things like pancakes. So it isn't odd that this kind of spice would show up in this particular thing. But these are also suggestions. I, I think today when we look at uh, uh, cookbooks, we, we don't think about the recipe as a suggestion, saying, well, you could do this and or change it up, you know, do, change this specifically. And in this case, I'm sure that maybe uh, you wouldn't need, if you didn't have ginger, but you had something else you wanted to make it spicy. Well, you could, you could use cayenne pepper. You could use just plain pepper, some other things to make it something more than just intensely bland. So we're gonna make these very, very simple dumplings. And they're talked about in many different kinds of cookbooks. Usually they're cooked in with something else, but in this case, they're done all by themselves. So we've got some flour, um, probably about a cup and a half. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. Salt isn't mentioned directly in this recipe, but we want a little bit of savory in these. So we're gonna add a little bit of salt. And now we're gonna add the flavor and the flavor resides just in this ginger. And I'm gonna use a, a good little bit of ginger here. If your ginger is old and 
uh, has taken a while to get to you, especially in the 18th century. It, it might have taken a long way to get to you. Um, it might be a little weak. So we're going to use a nice little bit of ginger. And then this also has yeast in it. Some of these dumplings didn't have yeast. They would be hard dumplings. Um, and that's good. They're fun. They almost have a meaty flavor to them or a, a consistency. They're so sort of tough to cut into. Uh, they wanted this one to be a little bit fluffier. So we're going to add a little bit of yeast. Yeast in the time period would have been a liquid yeast that came from the brewer. Um, that's also probably going to bring some flavor into it from the 18th century. It's going to have a little bit of hops, going to have a little bit of bitter to it. Our yeast doesn't have anything like that. That's why we have so much ginger in here. We're going to mix these up with a little bit more water, depending on how much water came in with our yeast. And I'm going to let set these beside the fire for just a few minutes, a half hour, just to give that yeast time to wake up, perk up a little bit. Uh, it might rise a tiny bit. I don't expect it to. Uh, but when it goes into the boiling water, it will start to spring up a little bit. There we go. It's our meal for two pence. Wonderful dumplings with a spicy ginger flavor. We've got our butter melting in here. There's one of our dumplings. Mm. These, um, depending on how hot the water boils or you know how how hard the water is boiling, um, they may take a little bit longer or less. Uh, I don't I don't like to have the water boiling too much when you put these in or it breaks them apart. Um, so you kind of put it in before the water boils and then you kind of let them half cook and then the water boils a little bit. Even though I put a good amount of ginger in there, it's just sitting there as a flavor. It isn't overwhelming at all. It definitely needed the salt and of course the butter pushes it right up over the top. Hopefully you've got butter to put in your dumplings, but they are so massively inexpensive, really. I mean, um, you can see how this could be part of a larger meal and it could be just, you know, if you were boiling meat, you would toss these in at the same time. If you couldn't afford the meat, this is what you had. You might even, if you were really that hard up, you'd save that water that you boiled these in. There's still a little bit of that, um, flour in that water and it, it serves as possibly a very very inexpensive morning drink if you didn't want to throw anything out and in some cases that's exactly what's happening. So it's been a generation since we've seen these rapidly increasing food prices um, but we've seen it before haven't we maybe a hundred years ago and we certainly see it in the beginning of the 19th century the 1800s and we see it in the 1700s food prices going up and of course all this hardship but we know we study history and you know you've heard you study history so you you don't repeat it we're, you know you don't want to be doomed to repeat it but we also study history so that we know what people went through and what they lived through we're here because they lived through those difficult times. Sometimes those difficult times helped them as time moved forward. Sometimes you have to have difficult times so you know what the good times are like. So yeah, we really need to study history. We really need to look back into cookbooks 250 years old that tell us what people were eating at that time when they didn't have enough money to put meat on the table. Yeah. I, I love being able to uh, dig into these things, uh, try these things out, experience what they were experiencing, even if it's just a little bit. Thanks for coming along with us today as we experience these things, as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.